Uh, good evening and welcome to the uh, October 9th Zoning Board hearing. Um, we'll do a couple of general housekeeping items if we have any. Um, last meeting we had the packages of the new, um, a new fresh package of the zoning regs. Everybody got a package of that? Mm -hmm. And if those need to be uh, put and bounded into the uh, books, just, uh, just let me know and we'll coordinate that. Mm -hmm. There's been a few amendments through some of the town meeting articles. So uh, when we do get these, kind of take a look uh, look at those and do a brief overview of them to make sure that they've adjusted and they've been changed under the zoning guidelines. <clears throat> the uh, first hearing tonight is, um, I hope I pronounced this correctly, Paul Mercure? Yes, that's correct. That's correct? Why don't you come on up? Um, we have no, I believe board members indicated we have no conflict. So on this panel tonight, We'll run with the four Fane members. And Brian, why don't you sit on this one, okay. please? Why don't you have a seat first, sir, why, uh, before I read, I have to read the application okay. process. <clears throat> uh, before we start, any other board members have anything to address the board with? We are going to be scheduling our next meeting for November 13th. If you throw those on your calendars, that would be helpful. I am passing around uh, an attendance sheet for this hearing, so anybody in the audience, could you please um, fill that information out for us so we know who we're, uh, who's in the audience and if you need to speak. Please address everything through the chair and pronounce your name um, and your address and where you live. That being 705, this is on the application of Paul uh, Mercury of 12 Poplar Street, Milford, for a variance from the provisions of Section 2.4 and 2.5 of the Zoning Bylaw in relation to a parcel of land situated on the northerly side of Poplar Street, known and numbered as 12. The variance relief is sought in order to permit the construction of an attached wooden shingle carport over the driveway closer to the lot line than is otherwise permitted. Um, I do have in the pa packet um, the uh, application from the applicant, and I will read that uh, application based on what has been submitted. Uh, upon the questions asked of the applicant, what circumstances exist relating to the soil conditions, shape, and topography of the subject premises, which does not generally affect other land in the zoning district, the applicant states, water runoff from a proposed carport roof will be collected by gutter and kept on the property via a downspout. No other environmental effects from the proposed carport is anticipated. Concerning the question, is the variance not granted, what hardship would be caused by the circumstances described? Uh, applicant states, number one, snow sliding off my roof can damage cars parked in the driveway. And number two, the solar panel installer requires hardship, one, corrected before proceeding with a solar panel installation on my home. Uh, then states, uh, number five, is the question, is state why you feel the grant of a variance will not cause substantial detriment to the public good? The applicant states, an attached wood structure carport with matching shingle roof will not neg negatively affect property values or the use of the abutting property. Uh, board members in your package, there is some diagrams and uh, looks like pictures. While I briefly brief, uh, read the comments, um, you can review those before uh, I open it up to the applicant. Uh, this came from the um, town planner. Uh, the Planning Board reviewed the October listed above at a regular scheduled meeting on, on October 7 and has recommended the following unfavorable recommendation, see Town Planner letter. The Planning Board did review this petition on September 16th and recommends the following unfavorable recommendation. Please see the attached letter. Uh, this came from Town Planner Larry Dunkett. The applicants re re requested a ZBA variance to allow for the construction of a carport to be 0 .09 feet from the side east property line where 10 feet is required. Also, the applicant is proposing the installation of roof-mounted small-scale solar system on the proposed cut port. This in itself would require an additional side yard variance as per uh, zoning law section 3.1.5, 1.3 for solar energy systems. The side yard encroachment resulting from the proposed carport and solar system constitutes a self-created hardship. Further, if the snow shed as it described in the 6-11-14 letter from the applicant solar contractor will exi exist for the, exist for the driveway. Clearly, it will be 
uh, will exist of the adjacent residential property as well. Therefore, I had, I had forwarded over unfavorable report forwarded to the Zoning Board of Appeals. In the packet, we do have the diagram based on this, I believe, is a cross structure by base state structures concerning, looks like the uh, footing aspects and the uh, construction of the carport. And we also have the uh, site plan, which uh, was brought in by uh, D. O'Brien Land Survey. Uh, please take a look at that. I'm having mine in red here, indicating where the proposed carport's going. And then I also have a letter that I need to read into the file. This is from Bright Star Solar. And this was addressed to the Town of Milford Plain Department building inspector, to whom it may be concerned. We've had a signed contract with uh, Mr. Mercury to build a solar PV system on his southeast face roof that abuts the dry area of his home at 12 Poplar Street. The pitch of the southeast roof is 50 degrees. Unless a carport is built, we believe a PV system can be dangerous in this location. Snow tends to shed its large sheets from solar panels because of the, they have a dark color and slippy glass surface. We are concerned for the people on the property that could be on the driveway below. We have affirmed to Mr. Mr. McCure that we will not build the project unless a carport is built on the driveway space adjacent to the home. With that, sir, um, why don't uh, you try and tell us what you're trying to do and um, give us an idea. Okay. Um, um, please explain to us what you've posted on the wall for us. If I could, uh, there's two pictures here. I posted two pictures, one looking down my driveway, which is right up against the house, and I've got the house with the, uh, the solar panels that have been installed. I've come to an agreement since with the installer to go ahead with that, regardless of that letter that you just read. And this is from the neighbor's side, looking towards my driveway, to show you that if I build a carport roof out here, it's not going to really crowd the area because their house is not anywhere close to it. Does that answer? I just wanted to know what the okay. pictures were. That's all. Thank you. Uh, there's an important piece of information that did not get read that um, clarifies or corrects. What, could you sit down? You can that way. There we can hear you through the microphone. Okay. And the people at home can hear you. There's a. An important letter that I returned back to Mr. Duncan regarding his um, <coughs> refusal, uh, unfavorable recommendation, and if I can find it, I'll share it with the board here. I can't believe I don't have it. Well, basically, what it does, uh, Mr. Duncan misread my intentions, and he's said in his letter that uh, the reason for him to refuse or to give me an unfavorable recommendation was that I was going to put the solar panels on the carport roof. As you can see, that's not the case. The solar panels are up on my, the main roof of my house. And the carport is only being built so any snow or ice or icicles that fall from that roof don't land on uh, any of my, my family, loved ones, or anybody down below, and injure them. Uh, that's my reason for asking for the variance, so I can build this carport. Okay. I did reply to Mr. Duncan. I'm surprised that that letter isn't in the package. Um, usually, the, the correspondence doesn't get into a package because the application has already officially been filed and advertised. I see. Um, you have the right, if you so choose, to have this hearing continued mm -hmm. and, and come back at the, our next meeting if you'd like something in the file to, because to, we can't make a decision on anything that's not in this file. I understand. Um, I do have to ask at this time then, is the planning board's unfavorable recon, uh, recommendation, is that fixed or do I still have a chance to, to get this very You You granted? need to have four out of five votes. I see. Um, you and again, you know we've been we've been at meetings where there's only been four members, and you know the applicant made the decision to continue it to the next hearing. And we've also had information right. we've had information that came along afterwards during the application, and the applicant has asked for a continuance so that that could get into the file. Okay. Well, I 
would like to say that um, we did send out letters, right, um, to all the neighbors. The town did that. The town did the that, process. and no one, as far as I know, objected, including the neighbor that's on the other side. Plus, just that one of the reasons they said at the um, planning meeting that they would <coughs> deny it is that possibly in the future, if someone bought the house, they would try to enclose it and, did you say this already? Make a room no. out of it. Our driveway is downhill on some cement and, um, I mean, it, that would be pretty strange. Well, uh, yeah, to finish that thought also is, if anybody wanted to turn that into a room, they'd have <laughs> to submit a, a building permit for a building permit. This is a currently that a multi-family, correct? No, it's a single what? family house. Single family? Mm -hmm. That <clears throat> I use that side door very uh, all winter long, and and there is enough traffic on there on that driveway to I th I think warrant protection. You uh, you say the uh, solar panels have already been installed? Yes, sir. They're on the roof. You can see them in the picture. Yeah. Are we proceeding with the meeting? That's exactly what I was just <laughs> going to say. Do you want to proceed with this hearing? Oh, uh, <laughs> because I don't know how the board members are going to vote, or you can continue it if you want to bring in more more information. I uh, I would like because I can't. We can we cannot discuss anything more unless you make up that decision. Let's proceed with the meeting. Okay. Okay. With that, um, before we go to the board members, does anybody else in the audience have any comments on this? Okay, um, Brian, I'll start with you. How did you get around this letter from Brightstar? Well, I, um, I do have more current correspondence uh, with Brightstar, and I came to an agreement that if I couldn't uh, get the carport built, then we would come up with some other way to defract the snow or stop the snow, some sort of a snow block or something installed <coughs> up there that would... Uh, break it up. It would still come down and fall, but it would break it up. Or I would try and build a garage in the back of my property. For, and just a simple comment. This is a self-inflicted situation. Solar panels are self-inflicted situation. This is what they chose to do. So right. now the, the snow is going to roll off and it's going to hit the car. But it was self-inflicted to begin with. Um, but why don't we continue on with the hearing? Um, the other question I had was, how far? I can't see from that picture. How far is the um, your neighbor's home and other structures in the property? All I see is yard. There. You can see from the shadow the home. The home is very close to the right-hand side of the the border of the photograph. It's it, that's about as much room as there is for the house. You see the house there. And if I could, I would um, like to address the um, self-inflicted problem. That slope of that roof has been like that for since it was built. Um, snow has been sliding off of that, and ice has been crashing down from that uh, since I moved in 10 years ago. The solar panels are only going to exasperate it. But that problem is, has been there. And if I could have built a carport there 10 years ago, I would have. But it never occurred to me to do that until I had this correspondence with a solar panel company, and they recommended it. And I think it's a good idea. I wish I could have done it 10 years ago, because I've been, my cars have been hit by snow sliding off that roof and ice. I'm worried about a lawsuit someday. Uh, anybody else on that side? Okay. John? Mary? I'm sorry. Um, yes. Um, I'm, I'm looking on here. Is it like, like 14 feet between where that wall is to the, per, to the, to the um, neighbor's house? Is that, would that be? Or the fence. I, where the fence is there? Are you saying from the, from the bottom of my stone wall over to where the house is? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'd say there's a good 14 feet. Well, what, I'm looking at the I'm looking here. at the plans here. It says 14 feet. Oh, that okay. seems to be another structure. Yeah, there's a home here. Well, I'm talking about right here. She's talking about. Four. Oh. They're actually showing 14 feet, 30.33. Yes, the uh, structure here, and this is their deck 
Okay. So that's 14 feet 3-3 three, three to the deck. Okay. Thank you. So you're basically asking to put the carport right about to the lot line? Yes, sir. And with the picture that I'm looking at with the car in the driveway, that's the location where the carport's going, correct? That's correct. But you could put that towards the back of the property as well. Uh, it's going to go along the, same, the whole uh, wall, the brick wall of my home, mm -hmm. as you can see. But you could. You have enough land further oh, yes. back to put, to put a carport further back? Um, well, if I went back further into my backyard, I would, I'd give up a, a great deal of my backyard and I'd put a garage back there if I could. Are you taking down that fence, oh, that chain link fence? No, that chain link fence is uh, the, the property line. Property line. Okay, and you own the chain link fence? Yes. yes. And that's 12 feet from the house to the chain link fence? Yes, I own the wall, the stone wall and the mm -hmm. fence. On it. So That's on my just, property. It's going to swing down. And it's going to go this way. As I understand that the whole purpose of the carport is to protect the driveway from the ice coming off the solar panels. Yes. Not primarily as a, a, a place to park a vehicle. Oh. Uh, you know, I think, you know, Dave mentioned about building the carport further back in the backyard, but the whole purpose is to alleviate the problem that you're going to have with this, the ice coming off the solar panels. Right? Off the roof, yes. Off the roof, off the solar panels. Now right. the solar panels. Yeah. If to put it further back, we'd have to extend the driveway because the driveway ends yeah, at but the, the end of the house. You still have the problem with the solar panels if you had a right. carport further back. That's correct. If I, I, I would just have my cars yeah. in a different place. They wouldn't yeah, get as much. Yeah, but any pedestrian traffic would still be liable to get hit. Because any home, older home, in this part of the country, and I in fact, have one or have part of one or whatever you want to call it, have uh, very high-pitched roofs. And the whole purpose of them built years ago was, was to keep the, the snow and the ice from building up on the roof. Uh, I see they said 50 degrees. I don't believe it's 50 degrees. Most, most of them were a 12 over 12 pitch or 45 degrees. Anyway, regardless of it, and there are many homes that have that problem. Of, it's unfortunately, yours comes down on the driveway. Yes, that's that's what makes mine a little unique, where the driveway is right adjacent to the house. Mm -hmm. John, um, how long have you had those solar panels that are presently on the house? August twenty fourth, I turned them on. Okay, so you haven't gone through a winter with those yet. That's right. Now, what do they say about those? Are those eliminate the buildup of snow and ice, or, or do they exacerbate the buildup? I can only guess at this point because I don't have any experience with it, and I really didn't discuss with the solar installer how the, root, the snow is going to slide off in detail. We talked a little bit about it, and because the solar panels are black, uh, they absorb a little heat and they have a glass surface. So when the snow comes down, it's probably going to come down in much larger sheets than it would if it was on a an, an asphalt shingled surface where it's gripping on there. My second question is, I noticed that your driveway is pavers, correct? Yes. And I look on the plans here and the footings are four foot footings. Mm -hmm. Are those going to be drilled into the present driveway, or is that driveway going to be reconstructed in some way? In the present driveway, uh, the plan, you can see this is uh, concrete, and I have pavers alternating with the concrete with the, the track marks. But over here, these are pavers, and we're going to uh, remove the, the pavers and drill down on the inside of the stone wall for the uh, supports. You're going to put new footings in? Yes, sir. Hmm. The, uh, the carport was constructed with the uh, intent to handle any snow load that might slide off of there, so that was built into the, the plans. Uh, and what about the neighbor's property and how that's going to slide off into their, into their location? Well, I don't have a lot of room, and, and the roof in the carport is going to start right underneath the windows, and it's going to 
come out here so I have an eight foot uh, space underneath the drive under. So the slope for the carport roof is going to be minimal. So I have to have a rubber roof on a carport roof. I can't have a shingle roof. That uh, is going to, there's no snow that's going to slide off of the carport roof. And I'm going to have gutters along the edge of the carport roof to collect any water that melts from the roof and I'll keep it on my own property. So I believe that the impact to my neighbor will be negligible. So what type of distance are you talking about from the end of your carport on your, on your neighbor's side? Um, is there even a foot there to the it's, fence? Uh, 0.8 feet. 0 0.9. 0 0.9. 0 0.9. Thank you. Looking so the fence is considered the lot. But, but the roof, but the roof is eight inches over on, from the post, from the actual post to, uh, to the footing. Yeah, the posts are on the, roof the inside. Roof is going to be eight inches hanging over. The roof will be eight inches over here. So it's really going to be going into the neighbor's yard. Anything mm -hmm. that's sliding off that roof is going into the the abutting property. If it slides off, uh, it it will probably drop on my wall, but on the other side of the fence. But nothing will slide off. I'm going to have a gutter there to collect it. And as it stands now, when I use my snow blower, all the snow goes over here anyways. I've been doing it for years. The neighbor doesn't use this during the winter at all. There's no traffic there at all. It's just snow. So all of the snow from my driveway ends up over there anyways. Is your neighbor aware of this project? Yes, yes sir. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've discussed it with him. He's okay with it. Look, looking at that photo, how far... Where would the carport start and end? Just, uh, if you look at the distance of my house, it's 30 feet. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the distance of my house. Uh, you can see there's a little, um, I apologize, I only have this one photograph, but I already moved my electric service out I can see that. further. It, made, it makes a turn there and then goes up so I can have the, the ledger board mm -hmm. along the whole face of my house. So basically, this carport is being built because you put the solar panels on the roof. No. 30 well, feet long carport? I think it's 34. It's 35. No. It's the length of the building. It's the length of my house. Yes, sir. And that's not... That's somewhat correct. I, I would like to have that built 10 years ago, like I said, but the idea only came up because of the solar panel installation. I have a safety issue at my house, and this is the way that I can correct it. So I'm here to ask permission to build that, uh, to get a variance so I can build it. I'm, sh I'm sure the solar, pan uh, the solar companies have dealt with issues like this in the past. And it's hard for me to believe that there's not some sort of way of resolving this sh issue without having to go through all this cost that's going to cost you and expenses of a carport to solve the issue of the falling snow. It's hard for me to believe that they haven't run into this and resolved the issue. Or in others, there's a lot of, you know, this particular neighborhood, everything's, everybody's on the property lines. Everybody is. All the way in the whole, that's the old neighborhood of town. And there's a lot of issues, and I can see where that snow would be coming off during the winter without the solar panels. How was that handled for the last 10 years? must have been the same. Not well. I've, I've had some damage to my car. <laughs> and I can see where your concerns are for possible personal injury. Yes. Um, the solar panels are going to obviously make that a little more dangerous, I would say, especially if we have a winter like last winter. Um, but there's got to be, there's got to be another alternative to protecting your property and personal injury. There has to be something out there. It's hard for me to believe that nobody's come up with a way of handling this from Maine all the way to Massachusetts. And I think it should be investigated personally prior to going forward on this. Have you thought at all, given the fact that, I mean, basically it's only 0.9 from the, uh, the lot line, have you talked about making the carport narrower to at least give it back if anything fell would be on your property and nobody else's. Yeah, it's very possible. If that would be a requirement, I'd be very happy to to modify the plans to take care of that. Hey. Uh, I'm sorry. 
Okay. So to address your, your statement, um, there may be, I, although I can't think of them right now, there may be another solution out there, but I'd be lying to you if I didn't tell you that I would really like to have a carport there. I, I no, I understand that. Not just for the practical sense of protecting people underneath it, but I think it would improve the appearance of my house and the functionality of my driveway. Okay. And, and I'm not getting any younger. It's going to be a lot less snow to shovel. I, I hope I, to, I can't argue that. I hope that this is my last house. Yeah. You are parking on both sides of the house? No, sir. I only have a driveway on that side. Is there room on the other side? No. My neighbor parks there. It's, it's his driveway. It's his driveway. <laughs> on the other side, it's the neighbor's property? Well, uh, on the un other side of my house, I've got a cement walkway that's maybe uh, eight feet wide, and then that's the property line. So I really don't have any room to, to build the driveway and park there. But he parks there. Your neighbor parks there. My neighbor's property is there, and his driveway is there. I guess that m my comment would be was the application was that you wanted a, a carport for because of the damage to your cars, and then the solar panel company said that it was a requirement or they weren't going to install. I, I would have rather have seen you come and get the approval for the carport before you had the solar panels put up, and then now you want us to correct that because now the solar panels you're concerned with. So, um, and I think you can move the carport. I mean, no. I'd like to see you no. make it smaller. Um, any uh, other comments from the board members? You have the last uh, word before we uh, close the hearing and take it under advisement. I may have misunderstood what you just said, but the, um, the solar panel installation was a completely different project, and uh, I have a completed building permit for that, and that was all done. It's oh, all that's fine, out. but in your application, that's what you stated, that you, the solar, yeah. the solar company wouldn't put it in unless you had a carport. That's the only reason why I bring it up. At, it, that's uh, an inconsistency, and I noted. Um, but I did renegotiate after I did submit for the, the application for the variance. Okay. Um, one more statement. Hurry up. <laughs> if in the supposed event. supposed to be his last statement. Go ahead. If in the event this is approved, if in the event it's approved, and you sell your house, or I should say your neighbor sells their house, then they have an issue with this overflow of snow in their property. Then what? There's no control over that. Uh, oh, just a question. From when I'm shoveling now, yeah, there would. No, be no, no. I'm saying if, if your neighbor sells his house, yes, and that carport is approved, mm -hmm. and the snow and debris, etc., are flowing over to his property, and that neighbor has an issue with that going onto his property, then what? Then uh, that neighbor and I can negotiate a fix. I, I would, I would definitely make a modification to prevent anything from flowing into his property because I wouldn't want it flowing into mine. Is that modification possible to be done now? Well, the modification, I would think, would be uh, a border on the edge of the carport roof to prevent any snow or whatever from flying. I'm going to have a gutter there that's going to take all the meltwater, but it's not gonna take you're it. talking about something that might be more forceful if a, yes. come to, if a, like a splash from the... I, I could probably put up a board to prevent anything <coughs> from sliding off of the carport okay. roof. Yeah, okay. I'd be willing to do that. Great. Okay. Then I will close the hearing and take it under advisement. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Okay. The next application is uh, Sal's Garage. Is the Sal's Garage. Is that hearing? That was at seven ten. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Seven ten applicants. Are you here for Sal's garage? Well, I'm here for it, but I'm not the applicant. Okay. Oh, okay. So make that clear. I'm not oh, okay. Out. I see. I'm an neighbor. Okay. Well, what we'll have to do is, um, I don't know if he forgot, but we're going to have to try and continue it. It's the only thing I can do. All right. She went out right tonight.
<laughs> yeah, nobody called, nobody said anything, nothing. I mean, I'm in favor of just denying it if they didn't show up. I mean, I don't, I don't think there's any, first you should probably pick the panel. Yeah. Well, the panel members on this one will be, here's my panel. Paul's. Oh, we got it right here. On this one here, it's the four main members, and we'd run on this one here with uh, with uh, Casaloya next in line. So, go ahead. I can. Op I'll open it up if you want me to open it up because they're not here. You can open it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm open, open it up. It up. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, on the application of. Uh, Sal Dias, DBA Sal's Garage of 87 South Main Street, Milford, Mass, for special permit and relief to sections 2.3 and 3.1.3 of the zoning bylaws in relations to a parcel of land located on the westerly side of South Main Street, known and numbered as 87 Main Street by MISO, Inc. Special permit relief is sought to permit an expansion of the non-conforming uses already in existence on the, pro on the premises to include automotive sales. Um, the application stipulates it's already a pre-existing non-conforming use. The current use is automotive repair, has been since 1928. Auto sales have previously been permitted and will not change in the general nature of the business. The proposed additional use auto sales will generate a very low additional volume of traffic. Um, as far as the uh, use of the premises uh, not creating cause of harm in, in the neighborhood, the applicant had stated that the proposed business will be for automotive repair and auto sales. No hazardous waste will be generated and there will be no changes or additions made to the existing drainage or drainage paths. Um, the planning board reviewed this on September 16th and, and voted uh, twice. Uh, unfavorable on auto sales aspect and favorable on unregistered vehicles aspect. Um, La Town Planner Larry Duncan indicated that the special permit to allow for placement of sale of unregistered vehicles on the subject property the existing use is a long-standing non-conforming auto repair shop. These special selection, uh, special zoning uh, regs of section 3.1.3 deals with the possible extension of non-conformities in general, where the ZBL section 3.10 specifically regulate the unregistered vehicles. Section 3.1.0.2 provides ZBA special permit approval for all outdoor placement of unregistered vehicles, but the addition of used vehicle sales to the subject property constitutes the addition of a separate use that is prohibited in the RA district and that would also require a class 2 dealer's license from the board. The auto repair business will generate the same amount of traffic whether or not the vehicle is being repaired or registered. However, to add that separate use of auto sales to a site that has long been problematic to the site, to the site upkeep and overall intensification of the use is ill-advised. Therefore, they recommend an unfavorable report to the Zoning Board of Appeal as auto sales aspect of the request and favorable report as to the unregistered vehicles aspect of the request. So with that, the applicant is not here. He's a no-show. Um, we can um, take the next step. We can totally deny, but we do know it's an automotive repair shop. We do know that there is... Um, They've had problems there in the past. There's been, and there's a litany of vehicles on that site yeah. um, that are double and triple parked. I wish the applicant was here so we could address those concerns. Um, especially when I went by there last night and the entire backyard was loaded with mm -hmm. cars. So uh, how would morning. The, any comments you want? I'll start with you, uh, Charlie. Well, my feeling is that uh, basically this is something that's dealing with his income and so forth and his lack of presence here. To me, I, I think we should just deny it. That's my feeling. It is a problem area. And more vehicles there is not a good situation. Okay. John? Yeah. It seems a little crowded to me. Okay. Okay. Definitely. I mean, I agree with the three previous speakers. No. I agree with, you know, no change. Right. Agree, Joe. Um, you, you're from the area. Would you like to come on up and sit down and tell us, uh, give us your name? Yes. yes. Please um, do. I am Consoletti Murphy. I live at 88 South Main Street, directly across the street. Um, I've lived there for 31 years, so I'm very familiar with that property, and it has a very bad history, as you all know. 
Uh, there was automotive sales at one time issued under a special permit many, many years ago with a prior owner, and that was pulled by the town of Milford. Mm -hmm. Um, it was because it was a hazard. There were the traffic that was a problem in the area. The cars basically park on the sidewalk there. They, uh, when they have, even just the repair shop is, is a stretch to have that many cars out there at one time. I've seen them all the way out on the sidewalk and all the way down in front of the next building where they, the people are dropping off cars and picking up cars all day and all night. They tend to operate quite late as well. Um, they're there many nights till 8, 9, and even 10 o'clock operating impact wrenches and things that I hear when I am in my house. Um, the traffic um, would be a concern to me. The st also, a couple of other things that I noted, um, the, uh, the land itself has had problems. Um, I suspect if they tried to do anything at all with that land, they'd find it was very contaminated. It's been, they've been dumping heaven only knows what on that property for years. Uh, it's been my, actually, my former husband's father had that shop back in the 30s, 40s, I believe. So I, it was even in my family at one point and then it was sold. But um, my concern is that they don't seem to have regard or respect for the neighborhood and that this would just add one more thing to do. They've actually been selling cars there. I mean, they've had cars with for sale signs and the same phone number that is on the door in case of emergency. And you look at that and then you look at the one on the side of the window of the car. So they've been selling them. They look like they're registered vehicles. They have plates on them. Maybe it's somebody's car they want to sell or whatever, but they've been selling cars from there. Okay. It's quite clear. Okay. okay. Um. That, other than that, we'll close the hearing, and why don't we take a vote on this right now? So we're, just so you know, um, there is there was, from the planning board, was unfavorable on the auto sales, but favorable on re unregistered vehicles. My problem with the unregistered vehicles is the entire back of that site is loaded with cars. Correct. So we'll just, you want to just, you, you want to make a, who would like a, well, I'm looking for a motion to deny both if you want. I'll make a motion to deny both. The motion has been made and married tonight both. Um, I'll second it. Second it. All those in favor? Denying, Denying it. it. Denying okay. it, yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> David, do we still have zoning enforcement? Yeah. Is this still a zoning well, enforcement officer? The last time this happened, um, all the unregistered cars were forced off the system. This wasn't too long ago. Well, that probably should be looked into again. Well, it will happen again. <clears throat> okay. Um, the next one, we're going back to the uh, previous applicant. Carport? Uh, yes. Uh, on the panel was uh, four main members and Brian. I'm not voting on it. I'm not. I'm not in favor of it either. I think that he, he clearly he Self wants us to yes. wants to so solve his problem with the solar panels, and he should have come here and gotten the approval of the carport first, and then dealt with, and then what? He said the solar company wouldn't put it up unless he put a carport, and then he goes and puts up the solar panels. He's lived there for ten years. He wants to let him build a garage in the back. Okay, so we have a, we have a vote. Um, we have a motion for uh, denied. I'll take a uh, I'll take a hand vote, and um, we'll take it from there. So we have a motion to deny by Mary. Seconded. Seconded by Joe. He wasn't on the panel. I was on the panel. I'm, uh, I'm I'll vote no. There's three. I'm not on the panel. And then I'm John's not. on the panel. I'm not against it. Okay. So we've got one, two, no, three, oh, sorry, and four. Right. Four in favor. No, I'm, no, against. I'm opposed. Yeah. You're, you're, you're in favor. Motion was to deny. So right. four to four to deny it and one, one not uh, to. Yeah, four to deny and one one not to. Okay. So it's sorry. denied. John voted um, in favor. Okay. 
Okay, with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor, opposed. Right. Thank you for joining the Milford Zoning Board October 9th meeting. Everyone, have a good night.